Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we will explore how to import an Excel database file having multiple sheets and use SQL to run queries on it. Suppose we have a database Excel file with extension XLSX containing these three sheets. Sales sheet contain information about company sales transactions. Customer sheet holds the data on customers and product sheet contains details about company's products. In this database, sales sheet has customer ID but not the customer name. Customer name is stored separately in customer sheet. Similarly, sales sheet has product ID but not the product name. Product name is stored separately in this product sheet. The sales and customer data is linked through the customer ID attribute which establishes a relation between these two. Similarly, sales and product data is linked through product ID. And our goal is to import the data of these three sheets into our MySQL workbench and then establish the relationships among these through primary and foreign keys. And finally run SQL queries to address the data analysis questions like how does sales distribution vary across different products, customers and countries on a yearly basis. The pivot table which you see here is created using these three sheets. If you are not familiar how to create pivot table using multiple sheets, I recommend watching my video that covers this particular topic. We will not only see how to import files in SQL, but also demonstrate how to replicate these pivot table results in SQL using the same three sheets. Alright, so let's find it out. Before we import data from Excel into MySQL, we need to convert and save each sheet separately into CSV format. Because Excel unfortunately doesn't support saving an entire workbook with multiple sheets as a single CSV file. And even if we attempt to save it by clicking on file, then save as, or you can directly press F12, which is the shortcut key for save as. Let's name the file as sales and click OK. We will encounter a warning message stating that only current sheet will be saved in CSV format. All right, so let me repeat this for other two sheets as well to save all the sheets as a separate CSV files. Naming this as customer. And finally naming as product. So once we have all the files in CSV format, now let's open MySQL Workbench from the start menu. and connect to MySQL database server where we want to import the data. All right, on the left hand side in the navigator window, you will find a list of all the schemas along with their respective tables that are currently loaded in SQL. A schema is like an organizational container that holds multiple databases. For our purpose, let's create a new schema which will contain our files. And to do this, navigate to the navigation bar which is located just below the menu bar, look for the option create new schema within the connected server. Simply click on this link to create a new schema and let's name this schema as sales underscore analytics and click apply. You will see a window having the respective code for it. Click on apply again and finally finish. So you notice that sales underscore analytics schema which we just created is appearing on the left hand side with empty tables. Now right click on the tables and click on table data import wizard. In this window, enter the path of the CSV file. Click on next, again next. And on this screen, you will see all the attributes or headers along with preview of your data. Click on next, again next, next. And finally, you will see the message that 700 rows are imported successfully. Now in the navigation pane, click on the refresh button, expand the sales schema, and you will see the sales table or sheet which you just imported. All right. If you click on this third icon next to the sales table, you can see the entire database listed here like this. Okay. Now let's import the data for remaining two files, customer and product as well.
Congratulations, you have successfully imported data from Excel database having three sheets into MySQL Workbench. And now it's the time to establish the relationships among these files through primary and foreign keys. A primary key uniquely identifies a record in a table, whereas a foreign key establishes a link between tables using the primary key of the another table. For example, in our case, customer ID uniquely identifies records in customer table. Similarly, product ID uniquely identifies records in product table. So customer ID is primary key in customer table and product ID is the primary key in product table. On the other hand, these two attributes, customer ID and product ID are also present in sales table and thus establishes a link between them. So these are denoted by foreign key in sales table. All right, let's implement what we discussed and assign primary key in product table. For this, right click on the product table and select alter table. In this alter table window, select the primary key checkbox to set customer ID as a primary key. And as we select this primary key checkbox, we will observe that the NN checkbox which is not null automatically gets selected. This is because primary key possesses two properties. First is uniqueness and the other is not null. And these properties ensure that the each value is distinct and mandatory. Also note that the data type of customer ID and product ID attributes was initially stored as text when we imported them from CSV files. So for our analysis, it is essential to adjust this data type to varchar. You can achieve this either by selecting the appropriate option from the drop down menu or directly typing in varchar. Varchar stands for variable character and can accommodate the necessary alphanumeric values and this number 32 represent the maximum number of characters or the maximum length of the string that can be stored in that particular varchar column. So after making necessary changes, clicking on this apply button will generate the corresponding SQL code that represents the alteration that you have made. Clicking apply again will execute this SQL code and finalizes the changes. Let me quickly repeat these steps for customer table. Clicking on alter table, creating a primary key on the customer ID attribute, changing the type to varchar and clicking on apply. So after creating the primary keys in product and customer tables, the next step is to make necessary changes in the sales table. We will change the data type of customer ID and product ID to varchar just as we did earlier. It's important to note that this time we are modifying the attributes of the sales table, whereas previously we made changes to the customer and product tables. So once the necessary changes are made to the data types in sales table, our next task is to establish a foreign key relationship. To do this, navigate to the foreign keys tab. Here you can enter a name for the foreign key. Let's name it as customer underscore FK. FK is for foreign key. For the reference table field, select the customer table. And from the list on the right hand side, choose this column attribute in the customer table that you want to map it with the customer ID column in the sales table. So this establishes a link between sales and customer tables, creating a foreign key relationship. Now let's define another foreign key by naming it as product underscore FK. Select sales underscore analytics dot product as the reference table and choose product ID from the right hand side. Okay, now click apply and you will observe that the corresponding SQL code. Click apply again to execute the changes. Now if we want to validate the relationships and observe visually whatever we have defined so far, let's do it by using reverse engineer feature. For this, go to the database tab and click on reverse engineer and click on next. A dialog box will appear, enter the password, then click next. Connection is successfully established. Click on next. From this list, let's select our schema which is sales underscore analytics and click on next and finally execute. Next 
and finish to complete the process. Once completed, you will notice this beautiful EER diagram clearly showing the relationships. EER stands for Enhanced Entity Relationship. Each table in this will be represented as a box and the connections will show the established relationships. Hovering on the links will highlight the attributes involved in the relationship like this. If you are satisfied with the diagram, you can also save it for future reference using this option. You can also export this diagram in various formats such as PNG, PDF, etc., which could be very useful for sharing in presentations or other documents. Alright, so now we have everything which we need to run SQL queries to address the data analysis questions like how does sales distribution vary across different products, customers and countries on a yearly basis. So let me first write the query and then we will discuss. All right, in this code, the use sales underscore analytics statement indicates that we will be working within sales underscore analytics schema. The select statement is used to retrieve data from tables and present it in a meaningful format. And within select statement, we are selecting specific columns from the tables like product ID, product name, customer ID, name, country, year, etc. And when you see the expressions like sales.product underscore id, it is referring to a column within a specific table. Table and column names are separated by a period or a dot. For example, when we write sales.product underscore id, we are specifying that we want to retrieve the product underscore id column from the sales table in the sales underscore analytics schema. Also note that SQL is not case sensitive when it comes to column and table names. So sales.productID and sales.productID with capital P would be treated as same in SQL. The from clause specifies the tables we are retrieving the data from. In SQL, the join operation allows us to combine rows from different tables based on a related column between them. And in our query, we are using join to connect our sales, customer and product tables. So this is where the magic of relational databases come into play. We have already established relationships between these tables using primary and foreign key constraints. Remember earlier we designated customer ID and product ID as primary keys in their respective tables. The join operation leverages these keys to link the tables together. The group by clause plays a crucial role in summarizing and aggregating the data in SQL. It is somewhat similar to using pivot tables in Excel. When we use group by, we are instructing SQL to group the results based on specific attributes such as product ID, product name, customer ID, customer name, country and sales year. This grouping is similar to how pivot tables help you to group and summarize the data in Excel. By specifying these attributes in the group by clause, we are effectively instructing the database to provide us the summarized information for each unique combination of these attributes. After using group by, we apply this aggregate function sum to calculate the total sales for each unique combination of these attributes. The sum function calculates the total sales amount for each group. Finally, order by clause sorts the results first by product name and then by total sales in descending order. Now after writing the SQL code, let's select the entire code and execute it by either clicking on this icon on the toolbar or by pressing Ctrl Enter from the keyboard. This will initiate the execution of your SQL query. 
and wonderful. The query ran successful and observe the results are displayed in this lower section of the interface, providing you with the comprehensive view of sales distribution across different products, customers and countries on a yearly basis. Now comes the interesting part. The results which you obtain from this SQL query are exactly similar to those derived from pivot table analysis using the Excel sheets. This demonstrates the power of SQL data manipulation capabilities in achieving analytical outcomes which are similar to those obtained from other tools. Additionally, MySQL Workbench allows you to save your Excel code using this option and also save the query results in Excel using this option. So with this, we come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it informative and helpful. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tutorials on SQL. Happy learning and thank you very much.